we have Ms. Uh, Julianna Hines from Planned Parenthood Advocates. And uh, Julianne is the Vice President of Community and Government Engagement for Planned Parenthood Pasadena and San Gabriel Valley, where she oversees public affairs, community education and outreach, and volunteer engagement. In 2015, she led the, the incorporation of PDP advocates, the 501c4, uh, social welfare and advocacy arm of uh, Planned Parenthood, San, wait, San Gabriel Valley. Yes, thank you. And continues to serve as executive director. Additionally, she acts as the chair of the legislative work group for Planned Parenthood Affiliates of California. Previously, Ju Julianne served as a district director for assembly member Anthony Portentino, as a field director, uh, representative for assembly member Carol Liu. She currently serves in the vestry of All Saints Church Pasadena and on the executive board of the Heritage Housing Partners, a nonprofit developer of affordable housing. So I'm gonna open up the floor to Ms. Julianne Hines. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Dina. I'm just so honored to be here today with such incredible leaders to talk about where we're at and why it's so critical to make sure everyone votes in this election. Um, and just, I know people get a little confused by the two organizations with Planned Parenthood um, to set some context. Planned Parenthood Advocates is the advocacy and social welfare organization that is there to protect the mission and the services um, provided by Planned Parenthood Pasadena and San Gabriel Valley. So in this time, as we continue to mourn the loss and celebrate the life of Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg, we've had too many reminders that we're in a state of emergency for women's health, immigrant rights, LGBTQ rights, racial justice, voting rights, and so much more. Last week's reports of forced and coerced hysterectomies at an ICE facility in Georgia are horrifying and unfortunately not new in this country. The Kentucky Attorney General announced this week that the two police officers who shot and killed Breonna Taylor in her home will not face criminal charges. Our justice system is failing and a reckoning is long overdue. And yet, during all of this, anti-abortion politicians across the country haven't skipped a beat. They're moving to replace Justice Ginsburg before she's even been laid to rest. As Carolyn mentioned earlier, President Trump is expected to officially announce his nominee to fill Justice Ginsburg's seat today, this afternoon. We know access to health care is at stake with a Supreme Court hearing scheduled in November on the Affordable Care Act. And 17 abortion-related cases are just one step away from the Supreme Court. A justice confirmed before the inauguration will undoubtedly put tens of millions of Americans' fundamental human rights at risk and access to sexual and reproductive health care like birth control and abortion will be under extreme and dire threat. This will have a rippling effect in California. While California has many laws protecting sexual and reproductive health care, there is a widening gap between legality and true access, even in this state. As we rise to carry on Justice Ginsburg's fight, we recognize that California has an obligation to ensure we remain a reproductive freedom state that's centered on protecting and advancing every person's ability to access the health care they need. As a leading advocate and safety net provider of sexual and reproductive health care, Planned Parenthood knows that health care means nothing in communities that are not able to access it. For too long, we as a country have underinvested and under-resourced Black, Latinx, and Indigenous communities, leading to less access to healthcare and dramatic healthcare disparities. We see these results in the ravages of COVID-19, economic inequality, structural racism, and public health failures have translated to exponentially higher infection and death rates in the Black, Latinx, and Indigenous communities. As Planned Parenthood braces for the national rippling effects of a potential change in the Supreme Court, compounded with the existing racial disparities within healthcare access, we need to ensure critical health systems in California are adequately funded and accessible. 
we know, in a time of both a public health crisis and an economic crisis, patients inside and outside of California will be reliant upon safety net providers and the high quality affordable care they provide. So I wanna say this, Planned Parenthood is rising to fight for the legacy of Justice Ginsburg, not only by fighting to protect the rights she fought for, reproductive rights, affordable health care, immigrant justice, workers' rights, racial equity, gender equity, but by working with California's leaders to close the widening gap between rights and true access. There's never been a more important time to vote. Our values, our very democracy are on the line in this election. And even in states like California, we need to overwhelmingly give voice to those values and make it undeniably clear what we all stand for. So as we've talked about, Governor Newsom um, has issued an executive order mandating that all registered and active voters in California will receive a ballot by mail for the November general election. And while this action expands Californians' ability to vote while staying safe, these changes, along with a wide array of misinformation being spread, may cause a lot of confusion, particularly among younger and less experienced voters, as well as those who normally vote in person. Planned Parenthood has committed to do all we can to engage these voters and make sure they have every opportunity to vote. We're launching a voter education campaign to make sure that everyone who comes into one of our local Planned Parenthood health centers gets information about how to register and how to vote. We're reaching out to our supporters through email, social media, and are partnering on mass digital campaigns to educate Californians about voting this year. And as we speak at this moment, Planned Parenthood staff and volunteers all across the state are making calls to ensure people are properly registered and educated on how to vote. We'll continue phone banking in the weeks to come. So for those of you who are local, if you'd like to help us educate these voters, reach out to us at ppadvocates at pppsgb.org, and I'll, I'll put that in the chat, and we'll share more about how you can get involved. And additionally, if you yourself need to register to vote, if you need to check your registration, or if you want to sign up to be a poll worker, you can check out our website um, as well. And regardless of where you're located, I'll reiterate what um, Supervisor Kuehl shared. Please vote as early as you possibly can. It's not enough to just vote this year. You need to vote early and you need to encourage your whole network to vote early as well. And so with that, I wanna thank the 5050 Leadership Coalition and Pauline Fields for bringing us all together today. Thank you. Thank you, Julianne. I have a question for you in the chat. Um, so it comes up. What impacts have you seen in, with the very extreme abortion laws both ways seen in the last four years? <laughs> yeah, a lot. Um, there's been a lot of, um, across the country, health centers who've had to close. And so the access has just diminished. In our own um, health centers here in California, we've seen an uptick of people coming across state lines. We've had um, several people driving in um, more now with COVID driving in, but flying in as well um, to our local health centers to receive abortions because they just can't get them. Um, we're also able to start telehealth as soon as we went into quarantine. And so a great deal of our patients are coming in through telehealth from other states. Um, particularly, we have um, transgender care services. We do hormone therapy. And a lot of those patients are coming in from other states because they just can't access these things in other states. Yeah, awesome. Um, I have one more question from the chat for you. Um, and then we're gonna, let's see. Do you see reproductive health slash freedom being available if the Supreme Court votes against Roe v. Wade? It's gonna really depend on where you live. And that should never be anything any of us have to say, to say that we're, you know, what your zip code is depends on the quality and the type of healthcare that you can receive. But um, that would be the reality in, in actuality in some states, Roe at this point is almost irrelevant because um, trap, law, trap laws um, targeted um, restrictions on abortion procedures in a lot of states have pretty much made abortion impossible. It may be legal, but it's not accessible um, because of all the hoops that people have to jump through. Um, so yeah, it's, it's definitely 
for those of us in California, it's enshrined in our constitution. And um, the real issue for us in the states, safer states is the accessibility and the funding issues and making sure that states are investing in protecting women's health care of all kinds. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you for sharing all the ways that we can get connected and all the work that, that's happening. Uh, any last words you'd like to share? Yeah, I just, you know, I wanted to reflect back. I know a young person had asked earlier um, how young people can really make sure that the adults in their lives are hearing their voices. And Planned Parenthood has a lot of youth leadership development programs. So I've been able to work with young people and see just they're so amazing and they have so much to teach us. And um, one of the things that I've seen be really compelling um, as a tactic is really to take those issues that you care about and relate it to your own story, relate it to how it impacts to you, relate it to why you're passionate about it. And I'll tell you, um, adults will listen to you. Yeah, awesome. Thank you so much, Julianne. And then we're now going to move on.